Hello and welcome to this Owen DR Modrail video, Rear Quarter Panel Trim Removal. This is video 189 in our series of XK videos. And this video we're going to show you the detailed method of removing the quarter panel trims as we've had to do uh, with the replacement of our headliner on our 1996 XK8. Um, fully removing or loosening the side rear side quarter trims makes uh, replace the headliner so much easier. You also need to remove it if you're going to recover the parcel shelf as we find we're going to have to, uh, which we'll do in another video. Um, you don't need to re uh, remove these quarter panel trims if you want to replace your rear speakers. If you do want to do that, take a look at video 75. There should be a link in the top right hand corner. The tools you're going to need if you'd like to do this um, are actually to loosen the quarter panel trims. You're going to need an extension bar, a wrench, 70mm socket, a small flat screwdriver and a small X or a Phillips screwdriver. To remove the door sill trims, which is part of a better part of the method, you're going to need a heat gun, a T25 torque, a screwdriver and a scraper or an old credit card. And then finally, if you want to remove them completely, you need to remove the seat belts, in which case you're going to need the addition of an extension and a T45 Torx bit. In this video, as, uh, as is customary in our videos, we're going to break this video down into several sections or chapters. First, we're going to quickly talk about trim colours and part numbers involved. Then we'll have a detailed look at the locations uh, involved in fixing these to the side of the car. Then we'll go through the removal sequence to avoid damage. And then finally, we'll go through the nine steps in detail. OK, first of all, trim colour. Our car, as we said in previous videos, is an oatmeal car. It has oatmeal plastic for its rear quarter casing. There are several other colours of trim. It could be, but in our case, it's oatmeal, which is AGD code. And there are several other codes there you can see on the bottom right hand corner. The part numbers, there are several uh, parts involved in the rear quarter panel trim. The actual trim itself is um, uh, J, sorry, GJA2428 AF in our case. Uh, but there are lots of sub parts within that. Obviously for the other hand it's 2429. Um, I'll go through the detail and the part numbers for each of the parts as we go through the video rather than clustering it up at this stage. Locations then. So there are several fixing points uh, as viewed from the outside here. I've highlighted there are uh, in red there are three screws or bolt fixings and there are um, in yellow three spring clips and in blue there are two trim points and the seats, rear seats, actually hold the whole thing in. That's the line, if you would. This is the fixing points as viewed from the inside of the panel, just for your reference. And this is the side of the car with the fixing points actually on the car itself. There are two main problem areas which have a high risk of damage when removing these rear quarters. One is a seat belt nut. And the other is the back end or where the parcel shelf um, inter inter interfaces with it. Um, I'm going to go through this in really high detail to give you an idea why they break and how to avoid it. The removal sequence then, very, very quickly how you remove it. You can, before we get into this, you can remove the headliner by releasing just the top area, what we're going to call the coat hook, coat hook and the two uh, clips at the top there. And I did drag my headliner out that way previously. I did put it back in that way previously, but it's extremely tight and I did end up damaging uh, my recovered standard headliner. Um, so it's not recommended if you don't want to be stressed and have the potential for damage. It is much, much easier to actually loosen these quarter panel trims, fully release them from the locations. You can see here, it gives massive amount of space available to slide the, uh, that headliner in without any risk of damage. Anyway, so let's go into the sequence 
Um, so first of all, you need to uh, remove the rear seats. Then you need to re uh, remove the coat hook screw. Then what we're going to call the seat belt nut. Fourthly, behind the seat belt screw, just there. Then fifth, the upper rail clips, which are two off along that top rail. Then the rear football clip. Then there's actually a, a little tab going under the door sill trim. You need to release that. And then you can get onto the rear parcel shelf trim. Then finally, if you want to remove them completely, you need to release the uh, seat belt lower fixing point bolts. Okay, so that's the sequence. Let's go into the details of each particular uh, section. Uh, number one then, the rear seat trim itself. I'm not going to go into the detail that I've gone into a massive video, well I'll say massive, a few minutes video on that in particular. I'd refer you to that. It's video 188. There should be a link in the top right hand corner. Quickly have a look at that. Second then is the coat hook screw. So you need to remove these coat hooks, at, at, as I say, along the top rail. Very easy to do. Use a small screwdriver to release the cover to the screw. Coat hook part number then is BEC. 23321 and the XXX obviously is the trim code for your particular color car interior. Once you release that uh, cap you should be able to see the retaining screw there. If you lose your screw the part number is JPT 10530B. Loosen that screw and the coat will just come off in your hand very very easy and simple. Actually, as it uh, interfaces with the car, there's a small plastic insert or a boss attached there. If you do break that, that part number is KZR 10009. Section three then, the seat belt upper nut, as we're gonna call it. You need to remove the cap covering the top of the seat belt bracket there. The cap part number is HND 7150AA, again with a trim code. The cap itself has two location tabs. Now they, these actually attach it to that top mounting point. You can see the matching sort of uh, slots on the seat belt bracket there. That's where it clips onto. So in order to release it, you need to basically push the cap upwards, ideally to one side, slightly twisting it, and it will come straight off. It's very, very easy to, to be removed, to be honest. Uh, you should now be able to see the collared nut we need to remove. The collared nut, if you lose one, is HNC 7141AA. Uh, you probably need some assistance with removing that. You need a 17mm stock at your wrench and in our case a medium size extension bar to loosen that nut off. It doesn't like coming off. It's obviously a safety item and uh, the nut is very, very tight. Once removed, the seat bracket should come free. You should now be able to see something like this. Um, you haven't finished releasing this particular uh, fastener area, if you would. Uh, if you don't remove this height adjuster knob, which I've pointed up at the top there in the middle, you will damage the trim, as I did there. The cover plate is snapped in two. As you can see, the bottom portion underneath where that nut was is actually gone. I damaged it inadvertently because I didn't know what I was doing. Anyway, we figured it out and I'm going to show you how to do it and how we broke it. So with this uh, seatbelt adjustment mechanism, there's a cover plate and in that quarter panel finishing uh, piece, there are some tabs which hold that cover plate in situ. Obviously, that's actually attached to the rear quarter panel itself and the adjuster knob is attached to the seat belt adjust, which is attached to the side of the car. And I've tried to show that in that sectional view. So looking at the sectional view, I say you've got the cover plate I've highlighted in red. Uh, the mech the body and the mechanism is in, uh, is in deep red. And then the adjuster knob itself pointed, and then you've got these trim tabs. Okay, so when you try and remove the quarter of panel trim. This is not the way to do it from the seatbelt area without removing that adjuster knob. The, it Actually, the it fouls on that adjuster knob. The cover plate can't get past it. 
And what ends up doing, if you force it, you will break the tabs. The panel won't come free. You probably won't know as you've just broke it, as I did. What you need to do, this is the correct way of doing it. You need to very simply and easily remove the adjuster knob first. This is the important bit. Then when you pull the quarter panel off the car, it comes freely away. It's as easy as that. How do you do it? Well, underneath the adjuster knob, there is a trim clip hole. Use your small screwdriver, push it in there. It will actually release a uh, clip and you can just pull the adjuster knob off. Something It looks something like this. And now you can see that remaining white piece of clip for the adjuster is small enough to go through that cover plate hole and you won't end up damaging anything. Section four then, behind the belt screw. So once you remove the seat belt top uh, nut, you'll be able to see this uh, screw area. In my case, it was missing. Um, this is the view from inside that piece of trim or esculum, I can't remember, what is it? Escution, if I pronounce that correctly. This is a view from inside of that. Um, actually on the car, it's got a, quite an interesting plastic insert, which actually got a slotted sort of shape. So there's a bit of tolerance on the position of that screw. The plastic insert, if you're interested, is XR2312. And that's the fixing point. And then you remove this screw with your Phillips screwdriver or cross screwdriver. The screw, if you happen to lose it, is AB6080-64. Okay, section five then, the upper rail spring clips. There are two spring clips on the upper rail area, and it's very important you grab them because they, you might be familiar with this if you took your door uh, inner out, uh, did inner off. You've got these spring clips attached to sort of plastic mounts these can break, uh, you, so you've got to be careful to get your hand around that area to avoid any unnecessary stress. That's the forward spring clip, and there's one identical on the, the back, as I say, built up on these plastic sort of uh, mountings. The upper rail area clip positions on the car are extended so uh, slots as well. So what you do, you squeeze your fingers in between the plastic um, of the panel and the headliner, feeling for that trim clip. You should be able to feel uh, the mounting point and then you know you're at the right place to pull it sort of downwards and inwards towards the, the car. And it should just basically release the clip. It's, it's as easy as that. Then you do the back one or the rearmost one. Um, again, get your fingers in between the plastic and the headliner and pull it downwards and inwards and it should uh, pull off from the trim clip. Might take a little bit of force the first time. Section six then, the rear footwell spring clip. A similar clip to we've just described is located here, sort of the base of the, the panel. Here's the spring clip as seen from the other side. Again, it's built on a little plastic mount. You put your fingers again under the upper, under the bottom edge there, find the clip position roughly and pull it outwards. Again, try not to stress the panel uh, too much. Section seven then, the door uh, tab trim. This is um, a little bit of the quarter panel trim that pokes out and goes underneath the sill cover uh, to help secure it. You can actually pull back this once you've released the other parts of the quarter panel. Uh, back into the car and drag it out from under there without releasing it. You should see the end of the trim like this, sort of the hook shape, but it does stress that quarter panel a bit and I'm a bit nervous to advise people to do that. I did do it the first time, but second time I did a bit more reliable and secure method. The whole lo lower trim should now be free. Um, what I would recommend um, is actually releasing that sill trim and pulling it inwards into the car rather than trying to push it rearward. Um, removing the door trim itself is less risky method, albeit it has its own issues. If you do want to do that method, you need to remove the sill cover insert. It's glued in with um, uh, some heat uh, sensitive glue. So you can use a heat gun or a hairdryer to weaken the glue and then carefully use their plastic tool or old credit card, remove the trim. Please note though, 
as the previous owner did with my uh, steel inserts, stainless steel inserts, they crinkled the stainless steel, got a bit too gnarly with it, and uh, it it's irreparable, da- irreparably damaged. Once you've got uh, that deformation in the stainless steel, there's no end of polishing or hammering or get rid of that. It's 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 basically stress the stainless steel, and it, you can't get rid of that. You might need to purchase some new replacements if that's your case, or make your own version like we've done. Once you remove that, you can see then four torque screws. These can be loosened or removed. And then once you've done that, the trim will be loose and you can easily slip that trim tab under and outwards. So it's really, really easy. Section eight then, rear parcel shelf again trim. So the rear quarter panel actually sits over the ends of the rear parcel shelf and it locks that parcel shelf into position. You can't get the parcel shelf out, as I say, without removing the quarter panels. The quarter panel itself actually has a trim tab, you can see here, that hooks over the uh, side of the rear parcel shelf that goes upwards towards the rear quarter, as you can see in the photo. Um, Be careful, because it's easily broken. He speaks from first-hand experience. As you can see, this is the broken bit. I did actually uh, super glue it back in, and uh, it seems to work okay, but I wouldn't advise having to have having to need to do that please follow this procedure so try and explain how these work so you've got these quarter panel trims in uh, yellow and they got the rear parcel shelf in gray and you can see the trim tabs uh, circled in blue and basically the part the, the quarter panel sit on top of that rear parcel shelf and engage the back of the uh, the the sides of the rear parcel shelf so what you don't want to do, as I say, you do not want to pull that trim on board like I did. Because when you do that, it might think you're going to re- uh, release a spring clip. You don't. You're just going to break that trim tab. What you do need to do is simply release everything else on that quarter panel and then simply slide the whole thing forwards in car and it releases. It really is as easy as that. Once you do that, you'll be able to slide it forwards. You can see the overlap. Um of that quarter panel has been sitting on the rear uh, parcel shelf there and the side trim should be loose except for the seat belt fixings in my case this was perfectly adequate for me but i am going to go and show you the last few steps of removing the seat belts to release it completely section nine then seat belts or the bolts so you need to unbolt the lower seat belt mounting points from the bottom or the footwell and under the seat of the car. In the rear uh, footwell, there's a Torx bolt sit that attaches a rail for the lower seat belt mounting point. You'd basically undo that Torx bolt, which is a T45. Please note, uh, this bolt does exit the vehicle. <laughs> so you need to take, uh, take your uh, wire brush to the other end of the thread, otherwise, it's going to be quite a problem getting that bolt out. Once you've got the, the bolt out, you can thread the seat belt off that retaining bar and it should come free. And then you can release this uh, tr- uh, piece of trim and push the, it all through the core. The, in order to release that esquichon, I can't pronounce that, you need to push the, t- the small tab at the rear of it back and then push it through. It's as easy as that. The rear seats then have a similar Torx bolt, again T45 Torx. You need to remove that bolt, It will the uh, fixing for the rear seat belt will come loose. And then again you can release this bit of trim from the back of the panel and push the whole lot through the hole. And then you should be able to remove the, qu- re- th- the rear quarter panel trim. Hopefully as easy as that. Refitting. Once you get to refitting, I use the same procedure, but in reverse. Um, obviously, it's, it's it's a lot easier uh, putting it back than uh, uh, taking it off. One thing I would note, when you're refitting it, please be aware of the uh, door seals. You have to push the panel 
behind the door seal. It's not something you take any note of when you're removing it because it just comes free. But you will need to get your finger behind the door seal and just pull it over the uh, top of it. Uh, that's um, another video done in our headliner video playlist. We're almost there. Uh, please take a look at that playlist. There should be a link in the top right hand corner if you're interested in seeing more videos about that. Um, hopefully find that useful um, if you're um, removing your rear quarter in a, in a interior trim panel. Hopefully with this video you'll avoid breaking it as I did. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Please like, comment, share and subscribe for more Xcate videos.